Hi everyone, welcome to Skipper's Boot Camp. Today is an important edition of Skipper's Boot Camp because we are going to be going through our Man Overboard Protocol. So what the Man Overboard Protocol aims to do is to have a plan um, in the very unfortunate event that someone falls overboard. It's a lot easier of course to stay on board and that's uh, really the objective of everything we do but we have to be prepared for the eventuality that someone does end up in the water and we have to recover them. So we've been to a few courses, we've got some notes, we've put together what we think is a reasonable protocol and today it's just a matter of going out into some sheltered waters and running through the protocol, seeing how it works in a few different scenarios and I'll go through those in a minute. So. Thanks very much for joining the video and we look forward to sharing it with you. So as Adam mentioned we've been on a couple of courses and they have covered man overboard but what I found is they're always reliant on more than two people. You know normally there's a group of three, four, five people on the course and that's how they practice a man overboard. And what's concerned me for a long time, it is only Adam and I on board and so therefore if one of us falls off there's only one person and some of these um, procedures that rely on lots of people being on board are just, it's just not realistic for two people or one person. So that's what we're going to practice today and I think it's important to say that, you know, this we're not experts in any of this and this isn't, we're not saying that this is what you must do, this is just what we're doing. Um, it's up to you to have your own process. This is just what we're doing and we're going to see if it works. Um, and of course for me, like Adam can sail the boat on his own, he's proven that a few times, but I feel particularly vulnerable um, because I, I'm really reliant on Adam at the moment with this boat and um, friends that are sailors gave us sage advice and said to get a boat um, that it only takes one person to sail and that's what we did and but I haven't actually managed to get to that point of being confident to do that so that's what this summer is going to be about me stepping up and taking a bit more responsibility on becoming comfortable in manoeuvring the boat and sailing so that if Adam did become unwell or anything that I can do that. So it's about being responsible. So yeah, so this is what we're going to do. Um, as Adam said, we are in a very protected bay. So um, there's no swell. The winds are very light at the moment. It's 13 knots. And, and it's not the objective to go out in 30 knots of wind with big seas. That's not what we're aiming to do. It's just to become familiar with our safety systems. I don't know how to deploy the dam boy. I don't know how to use the life sling. Um, at the moment, I don't even know how to put a man overboard on the chart plotter. So that's what this is all about, just to become familiar. And as I say, um, this isn't us telling you what to do. That's up to you. This is just our thing. So Adam's going to go through what we're going to do and we're going to show you all the safety systems that we have on board since doing the course um, because there was a lot that we thought we knew and we didn't actually know. So the basic protocol for a man overboard process is in three main steps. Step one, so the man overboard occurs, so we yell man overboard, we point and continuously watch the man overboard to help the person on the helm locate them immediately drop a pin on the chart plotter using the man overboard function and we deploy the Dan boy. Um, we also have an AIS transceiver on the main life jackets on board so that would be in theory showing up on the chart plotter. So in this scenario the triangle is the boat and the wind direction is coming this way as shown by the arrow. So then the next step is to tack heave to, furl in the head sail, sheet in the main sail, check there's no lines in the water and start the engine and then under engine make way upwind of the man overboard so that the boat will drift at about the beam onto the man overboard so the contact won't be lost and that's where the recovery stage step three of our little protocol can take place. 
So we're just going to run through some of the safety equipment that we have on board. Um, today we're going to wear our life jackets um, and even though we're going to wear them we're actually not going to be in the water with them because we've done that on the course already where we've been in the water and they've inflated and we've only just recently had them repacked and that was and recertified so that's expensive. So um, we thought we knew how to use the life jackets but, it, but the course showed us there was a lot to learn. So become familiar with your life jackets is one thing I can say if you're not already. The other thing we've done is we've labelled our life jackets with our names and we've pre-fitted them so now we know whose is whose and we're not fiddling around trying to use them and trying to fit them. Um, so our life jackets have a hood and they have a spray hood um, so that protects our face from any spray and also they have a self writing so if we were in the water and we were on our stomach or our face down they should turn us over and we float on our back and support our head and neck. Um, they clip obviously in the front and we have um, a crotch strap on them, they also have a light, they are self inflating but of course we can blow them up as well and um, they have a attachment point on them. Um, there is the attachment point. Don't want to inflate the life jacket accidentally. So they have an attachment point for where someone can be lifted out of the water. Um, and recently because we went on the course and we really started thinking about just the two being the two of us and how serious this can actually be um adam thought it prudent to invest in a couple of these man overboards which will also go on our life jackets and i should mention we have lights in here too and so one each in the life jacket and um, they are ais and what these do is they have the digital selective calling so dsc and what that does is that if one of us goes in the water it alerts the chart plotter alarms and it also alerts all other boats around us on VHF that someone's in the water so that's really really good so I think that's one of the best investments too that we've made so those are our life jackets um, and yeah we've got four life jackets one each for Adam and I and two extras and um, we've checked all of them um, we inflated those and they work and we did the course with the with the guests one and learnt a few things there so we've put on lights for them now too <laughs> and the other safety equipment we have on board are um, jack lines that aren't set up today but usually if it's quite um, gusty and rolly Adam will set up the jack lines and he puts them through the centre down the centre of the boat not on the side decks um, and attaches them to strong points and we have tethers that we can um, clip onto our life jackets it's a three point tether so attaches to our life jacket and then we've got two points that we can attach to on the boat and move up and down we have the dam boy um, which I don't know really how that works but Adam says it just folds it high and then it folds back down. So the purpose of the dam boy is, is that you can throw it and it goes where the person's supposed to go with the tide so at least you get an idea of where they are. Um, we don't have an inflatable dam boy, um, we have a hide, what is it called, like a, a non-inflatable dam boy, I don't know, which yeah so we're happy with that. Um, and that's actually what we're going to use as our man overboard today. So instead of me throwing Adam in the water, we're going to use the Dan boy as the person in the water. Um, we also have a life sling. We've got a boarding ladder, fortunate, a boarding platform and a boarding ladder. So that should help the person um, get up on the boat. We have a throw bag that we can throw to the person and they can catch that. And we have two horseshoe life rings and they did have lights on them um, but what we found were the lights <laughs> were on all the time <laughs> and they were collecting water in them so we took them off and we've actually invested in some more expensive lights which we haven't yet put on have we yeah so we've tried to do everything that we can um, to keep as safe as we can but like Adam said before and like everybody tells us the golden rule is not to fall off in the first place so to take the precautions um, 
so yeah that's everything i think that we can do okay so let's go out and try our man overboard drill see how it goes <laughs> relocating it and bringing it back aboard so this today represents our man overboard here goes the first deployment of the dan boy okay i'm pointing for you okay yep come around to the starboard bit to port and then come around hard. Okay, I'm turning. Yep. Slow down. You need to manage your, manage your speed. Hard around. So you're going to come in and you're going to park upwind of it like this. First time, you know, we that's made contact. Sure. Oh, so yeah. you got the general process now? Yeah, needless to say, I didn't look once at the navigation. <laughs> <laughs> no, <of course. laughs> no worries, okay. there's a lot going on, eh? Oh, yeah, I don't know why, but I'm shaking. It felt so real. <laughs> you know? Do you want to do another one now? Okay. Okay. Which way am I going? It's going. It's going to go off the other side now. Yeah, but which way should I turn the boat? Get ready. Um, just start motoring. Okay. Maybe start motoring up that way, just to give us a bit of room. Okay. Man overboard!
Dave. Yeah, uh, it was good. Do you want some yeah. feedback? Yeah, I tried to slow down. It was already in neutral when you said slow down. Yeah. So I've got to slow down earlier. I think um, if you just go a bit wider, make the turns less sharp but go wider, it'll provide you more time to okay. turn and to uh, adjust your speed. And I think um, also that time you're on the downwind side of it. Uh, so I was risking it coming out of reach. Uh, uh, but that's why we're out here. So nice wide turns. Yeah, I'm just going to clear that. You can, you can use the wind to control your speed when you're yeah. coming up into it. That's the point. Okay. Yeah. So you nailed that. Wasn't too bad, eh? No. Did you find that? Um, good. Yeah, I think relatively straightforward without the sails up. Huh? Yeah. Um, okay. But no, good. It's a clear marker, eh? It is a clear marker, and I'm glad it's not moving very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, There's not a lot of windage on it. do a bit of heaving to to start with. I need to get the right amount of head sail out so that we'll balance we'll come up um, and not tack through again. So I just uh, put out we did it before and we were hard, struggling it was going to tack through so I've got a bit more head sail out now which I think will help pin the bow down off the wind. So we just sat it downwind a bit so we've got a bit of room and then we'll turn around um, and Give yeah, it try, try it out. Yep. Okay. Fully locked around. I think this might do it. That's more like it. Okay. Yeah. And I'm steering hard to port. So okay. They're fighting against each other. But the wind's winning. Yeah. But it'll get to the point where the boat picks up a bit and then it'll steer up into the wind and slow down. There. We got there. Quite a lot of headsail required. It's about 15 knots of true wind. So I just needed that bigger bit of headsail to slow us right down. And it took us a while. We were doing about three knots forward still. But then I pointed about 60 degrees off the wind and slowed down and then we were doing about 1.1 knots over ground so and it, what did you think it was pretty calm at, at first um when we turned around it um felt like you know rolly and and like the boat was going to lurch to the side but it then calmed down 
Yeah. yeah, it didn't lurch. It felt like it was, but it didn't. Yeah. And then it calmed down. Yeah. So that was all good. So yeah. But we still how fast we're going 1.1 1 .1 1.1, yeah. So yeah. So what's the plan now? You're gonna. I'm just gonna do that once more. Yeah, and then I'm gonna throw the thing over, and you're yeah. gonna try and pull the sail in. And I'll I'll do everything so sail to receive uh, rescue the person. Ready to go? Yeah. We hope to now. Okay. So it's quite good. Okay, so. Um, yeah, I think we've got about the right amount of head sail up. Yeah. And we just have to ease the main sheet completely so it wasn't driving the boat forward. So. So we're heaving to. Yeah. Okay. Heaving to. Through the wind. Slow down. Get around. And turn full lock and port. Okay. There's, Might be able to grab it. There's the damn boy. Oops. Where are you? I can't see you on. Oh yeah, there's the damn boy. Okay, grab your guns. It's over there. Do you want me to get it or you get it? No, I'll get it. At least I know I'll be safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Found that. Found that. It seemed fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're quite easy conditions. I'm sure it would be harder than the real thing, but. Um, but it's just about practicing. Yeah. That's all we're doing, it's just getting familiar with things. Yeah. So, no, it was good. I'm, I'm really pleased we're doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the most beneficial so far is the heaving two side of it. And getting a sense in 15 knots of wind, how much head sail, and what the status of the mainsail needs to be. So would you need more head sail out and stronger wind? Less. Less. Because the force is greater, so oh. you need a lesser amount to have oh. the same effect. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Now it's my turn. So, you better wish Adam luck. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I feel lucky, but does he? <laughs> <laughs> Got some work to do. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what are you doing? Okay, well I was going to chicken out and not do this. Because, um, yeah, I was going to chicken out. But then I realised that I can't chicken out of this. So I'm going to do it. I'm practising the hoving too, because I've never hoved too. So we're just coming in, the head sails are about to be back. And I'm going to turn once it's backed. Is that right? Yep. And I'm going to turn to hook to start it. And you can use the 60 as a reference of where yeah, the boat is. And I'm going to use that as a reference. So um, our current speed is 0.9, so I did better than Adam. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because there's no wind. <laughs> You're very welcome to do more better than me. Um, so this is the first time I've hoved to. So we've got 8.1 knots of true wind. Um, and the boat's now 0 0.7. It is, does feel like it's actually stalled. I've got the wheel all the way you to have, started. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So, okay. So hang on a minute, because the jib... Yeah, so it's going to come back, so I'm going to have to go back. Into the wind. There's probably not enough. We'll just power up. Yeah. Because we don't have enough power at the moment. Okay. So, what should I do? Yeah, get a bit of speed on. Enough that you can come up and tack, basically. Yeah. Okay. So, you need a couple of knots, maybe three knots or something. So we're going up a knot, 1.1, speed over down. No one's in front of us, so. Eh? No, you're all clear. Okay, I'm going to try again. Yeah. So I'm turning into the wind. Now. There we go. Sails back. I'm now going to turn to start. 
cupboard, the wheel, and we're slowing down. We're going one knot now. We were 1.2, 1.1. So yeah, it's a little settled. See how the bow is coming up again? Yeah. So you might need to just I'm gonna tack again. So you just need to steer it around a bit. Yeah. And it's like it does take a while for it to settle down. Yeah. And it's light wind. Yeah. It's shifty. So Okay, we're point seven. Okay? Well hold it. let's hold it for a minute and see yeah. if it's gonna work. Bow is gonna come up. Point six. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, you've done it. Give me some. Air. Okay. So, um, yeah, no, that was good. It was good for me just to even feel my too. The conditions are very, very light, and like we're in a very protected bay with no swell. So, for the first time doing this and hoping to, I think that was good. It was a good experience. And then we'll just predate our experience as we go. But um, you can see we removed our life jackets because it was getting a bit hot. <laughs> okay. Not a safety tip. It's not a safety tip, don't do that. But we we're getting a bit hot. Um, yeah, okay, what do you think? Yeah, I think it was good. It was a great uh, exercise. And yeah. I think we'll just do it semi regularly. Yeah. Uh, keep it up. Do you, okay. think our, do you think our little procedure is worth keeping? I think so. I mean, the next thing I guess is for me to do it all on my own um, because you'd be the one in the water if I was on my own. Um, whereas at the moment you pulled in the head sail and pulled in, the, but that's okay. I'll get. The important thing is I've learned how to hove too for now. Yeah. Yeah, that's the important thing. Okay. And we'll go from there. So, are you going to do it once more and then we'll call it a day? Yeah, I think so. Once we get back to the anchorage, we'll do our throw bag and our horseshoe ring and um, my biggest concern besides um, being on my own on the boat and losing Adam is if whether I'd be able to pick him up. I mean I know he can pick me up no problem but I don't have a lot of upper body strength so I think that's my biggest concern. So we're going to try that too once we're in the anchorage yeah. to see how I go. I might okay. be needing an electric <laughs> yeah, other than that, I'm going to have to start working on my body strength. It's probably the best option. Yeah, okay. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Skipper's Boot Camp, Man Overboard. Uh, it's really fun practicing and recording and bringing it to you. If you like the content, please remember to subscribe, like, give us comments. We love to hear from you. And next time we will be doing the recovery part of Man Overboard where we try and hoist out of the water and we'll make contact with the person in the water and hoist them out of the water. So please join us again for that one. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.